All right. So if you are new here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Um, we're glad you joined us. This is recorded. And as Beth said, we do put it on YouTube. And you can watch all the previous videos by checking out our success tools on our website at ingertech.com. And I did hit record. And let's get started. So if you are watching this on YouTube, as always, like, share, comment, and hit the notification bell for more videos on legal technology talk. So like we normally do, we have a smaller group right now. I'm sure some more will join. We're going to start with our poll. So it's a fun one today. Well, they're all fun, but this one's fun. <laughs> all right. Which version of the Grinch is best? And you can put in your votes. Did it pop up, Beth? Yeah, it popped up. It doesn't want to let me vote. Oh. oh, perfect. All right, we have one for the original. <laughs> I'll leave it up for another second. All right. So it looks like the original one. I personally would vote for the new CGI version. I really enjoy it. But the original is awesome. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Today, we are going to talk about um, you don't know what to ask if you don't know what exists. Um, this is an important question, and we're going to be um, specific to the legal technology world for this video, obviously, because we're in the legal tech space. So we work with so many law firms around North and South America, and we see so many amazing things that law firms have accomplished. The one thing we find common to so many law firms is the workarounds that we're seeing be created. There are many reasons we see people create workarounds um, to make their process work. Workarounds could be how a file is moved, the software is used, and the database is being used. Workarounds can be awesome. But to my point, most of the workarounds we see are people solving a problem that already has a solution. Um, they have created a solution that works partially, but it at least does something. And we ask ourselves why they aren't using the features in their databases or third-party software to use a software that does what they're trying to solve. Well, it's pretty simple. It's because they don't know that it exists. So how would they know to use it? How would they know how to use a specific technology tool when you don't even know that that tool exists? And that's fair. Um, so is what I want. So is what I want to do is I want to show you the top of the top level gold of what can be done. So when you are problem solving, you'll know what exists. So you know the right questions to ask in solving your legal technology questions. So today we are going to demo Lawmatics a little bit. Um, a lot of the uh, practice management softwares have features like this. We're just going to show you in Lawmatics. Um, because it does have some of the more powerful automations and features in the legal practice management space. So by seeing what is available in the legal technology world, then you know the questions to ask. Is our database right for us? Are the tools we're using right for us? Can we do something similar with our current database? Whoops, Nancy's coming back. There we go. So are you asking the right questions? or just the question that meets your immediate need. That might solve a quick immediate problem, but will it solve it in the, in the long term? And what is the cost of doing it short term versus long term when you're trying to make technological solutions to problems you've found? So I used to teach workshops for estate planning to potential new clients. I loved it because people came in with their limited knowledge on the topic or misconceptions. And by presenting practical scenario after scenario in realistic stories and settings, they started to learn what can be and what exists 
And then they have the proper questions to ask. So instead of stating, I want to deed my house to my kids right now, now they can ask, I have a child who uses a lot of drugs. I want to take care of them, but in a controlled manner after I'm gone. I heard that you can do that. How can you do that in my situation? That is a completely different discussion because now they know something exists. So now they know the proper questions to ask to create better solutions. And this is true for the legal technology space of what we're talking about right now. So those are the questions we want you to be able to pose to yourself, your colleagues, and at your weekly team meetings. Just asking the right question can open such amaz amazing dialogue on solution finding and problem solving. You ask the right question about legal technology. Then once you talk that through with real knowledge of the situation, you can make an informed decision of moving forward with a solution. Just like at your firm, um, or just like your firm offers options in the conference room and then lets the potential clients decide what's best for them, that's what you're doing with up-leveling your legal technology in your office. You're learning your options of what actually exists and then fitting that into a solution for a struggle you're experiencing. So I'm going to go through um, quite a few features in Lawmatics that are built in. And again, these are in a lot of practice management softwares. Um, and these are not workarounds. These are out of the box, ready to use in Lawmatics. So if you're using the proper tool that's already there, you don't have to create workarounds. Do we want you to use Lawmatics because it really is one of the best softwares in the legal space right now for practice management? Absolutely. Because our excitement comes from seeing your firm succeed and grow. Though, we do want to show you Lawmatics because it has the features that many practice management softwares are trying to catch up to. So let's go through a bunch of features in Lawmatics so you can start to see what exists and then ask the proper question of how to solve um, a struggle in your office. When you see a feature that we show you, think about how you are doing your job every day and start to see how technology can support you and ease your mundane tasks every day, and then develop the questions of how to make your job easier as we go through this with legal technology. So here we go. These are the features that are built into most databases, or I'll actually say some databases, though they can be automated differently through different platforms, some more than others. So I'm going to screen share into Lawmatics. Let me open just Lawmatics. Boom, boom, boom. All right, and we'll go into this one. Perfect. All right, it's just opening right now. All right, here we go. Now I'll share my screen. Sorry about the delay on that. So this is Lawmatics. Again, you can apply a lot of this to your current database. So, um, the first one I want to do is stop copying and pasting using email templates. We make it on our, we make it so hard on ourselves by um, retyping the same email over and over and over and over and over. You don't have to do that. And most databases let you put in a template. So in here, this is what it would look like. I'm going to call this one um, intake follow-up number one. And I'm going to send this to Matter. And I'm not going to worry about a practice area right now. Because this is the screen we want to look at. So most of them let you already put in the subject line. So I would put Edinger Tech, and we'll pretend it's a law firm. Law firm. And then... Think of a creative subject that you want. So touching base or catching up, something. Um, this is just a side note, pre-header. Um, these are really great to put. I know a lot of people skip these, but when it pops up in your Outlook or something or somebody else's email, a lot of times the pre-header shows up and that's just a little summary of what the email is going to be. Um, so you can say something like, don't forget to schedule your consultation with us. 
and I'm going to show you what you can do. Because a lot of people think in automation or in features that you can't have it personalized, but you absolutely can. So here I would go, hi, first name. So this is the template. And then I would say, um, it was great speaking with you. I'm just going to put some dots. I'm not going to make the whole thing. Um, we would love to connect to schedule a consultation. You can click the link below. And www. This is my scheduling link. Com. Whatever you're putting, and then say reach out with questions. Whatever. So you can put all that in there. But let's say in the consultation you're collecting goals of why they want to do something. You can put those into your database as goal one, two, and three, and you can make your follow ups more powerful in your templates. And then it auto reminds them. So in summary, you stated that you want to protect your house from Medicaid. That could be something that came from the meeting and it's going to auto populate different goals they had. So this looks super personal. And then you hit save. And now you have an email that you can use over and over and over for your first follow up and your second follow-up. Stop copying and pasting that over. Um, document templates are the same. If you're sending out letters, if you're doing wills, let those generate. And I'm gonna let Beth talk about documents for a second because she does more of the document side for us. Oh, you're muted. Hello. <laughs> uh <laughs> Yeah, so documents kind of are the same thing. So you can um you can set up documents to pull in uh, all kinds of stuff. And we do document templates for yeah. everything from um uh estate planning documents um all the way up to trust um and also we do um a lot of court forms um right out of the system. Um, so you're not needing enough to go to another place to do those court forms. Um, all that kind of stuff can all be generated out of your, um, um, yeah, out of your software. So, so you can send them out and, um, Lawmatics has a feature that you can send, actually send them out for signature action step does too, a little differently, um, that you can track all that, do all that. So all of your um, uh, engagement agreements can be pre-filled. Um, we have one firm that uh, used to take them about 25 minutes to send out engagement agreements. And they're now down to like three minutes or something. And the engagement is out and out for signature um, that easy. Um, now with that, I will tell you one more little bonus is you can do a tablet in office and have a uh, document signing right on that tablet uh, immediately. So you're not actually printing things out and doing all that stuff. So that can all go through your uh, document signature software as well. So there's ways to do all of that stuff where it's not the attorney walks out of the conference room and says, hey, I need a, a uh, engagement agreement for this and it takes you 10 minutes to get it to them, doesn't happen. It can be there in uh, just a couple minutes for them to sign. So yeah, those are all of the kinds of things you can do with documents and they all save time. And uh, it stops the copying and pasting and missing something and whatnot else is just to set them up as templates and have them all ready to go. Yep. And that leads us into the next part of automate what you can. Um, in Lawmatics, you can get pretty powerful in the automations, but automate what you can. And so we're going to talk about tasks. Um, so many people create a task to create a task. Or every time they move it into their database, into a stage or step of consultation, they go out and task all the things that need to happen. I don't know of a practice management software that doesn't let you at least auto-populate the tasks for steps. That if you 
are on a consultation, it will populate the tasks that you told it to populate. So stop manually creating tasks that are repetitive. Yeah, you'll create one that says, call so-and-so, I promised them I would. Those are fine. We're talking about the repetitive, all the always the same um, responsibilities. So if we look at an automation, um, it can be done as simple as, um, I'm going to do this off of a trigger. So I'm just going to call this, um, mm, let's just call this consultation. I'm going to make it a matter. I'm not going to teach you a lot of this part right now. I just want to show you what it can do with tasks. So it can say if it's on a consultation step. So I'm going to go here. Uh, which one is the stage, Beth? This one? Yep. Yeah. So if it's on a consultate, whoops, what did we call it? Just, um, oh, is equal to, dun, 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 dun. see, obviously workshop, all of these can kick something in. So I'm going to say, when you put it on a consultation step, then start creating these tasks. In here, you can actually make it do a lot more, like send a text message, send emails. It's going to kick in um, reminders and forms and payment requests. You can kick all that in where you're not doing that. And it can do checks and balances of sending reminders, the Zoom link, the email, all of that it can handle. But on this one, we'll just use a task, for example. And this one is prepare file for consultation. Due date will be, well, this isn't quite right, but um, you can set it up to be two days before a sign meeting, and then you would put it through. And then you can create all these tasks that will just auto-populate as soon as you move it to that step. Do those tasks. Nothing is missed. Stop creating all of these tasks over and over and over and over. Um. Do you want to add anything on the automation before I go on, Beth? No, I think you got it. Perfect. Um, and here I will just show you real quick. You can absolutely send emails to yourself, to somebody in your team, and to the client. So you can send all your reminders, all of everything you need to happen that you would normally do manually. The automation can do that because you kicked it into a certain stage that the client is. In this case, it's consultation. Um, you can do creating appointments. You can request appointments. This is great for follow-ups. So when it kicks through the follow-ups, you can kick this out that requests them to schedule an appointment. And they can just do that from their phone or computer. Add tasks. Adding delays is actually one of the best features ever invented. It's what makes an automation so great is that you can say, send a confirmation email now wait five days and do this, wait two days, do this, wait one hour. So the delay is really great in getting all of your stuff timed in the automation. Um, if conditions, if they open this email, then continue with something. If they didn't, then tell them they have to read this email before. And then once they do, it can move them along. So you can do these if things that the automation is handling. You can send them a form, like the personal information forms you would send out before a consultation. Um, you can send them a document to sign, to read, whatever needs to happen. Text messaging. In this platform, you can actually do two-way texts. Um, so you can text back and forth right within Lawmatics. You can request signatures on engagement agreements, fee agreements, anything you need agreement or signatures on. You can request documents. You can say, change what a field is in the matter. Let's say the field says there they live in Sacramento, California. They get a form and they put, actually, I live in Los Angeles, California. The change attribute, um, I'm really simplifying this, but the change attribute can change it automatically to say Sacramento in their information. You didn't have to do anything. Um, convert matter to sold. You can invite them to portals through the automation. You can run conflict checks 
this one has some different things and every system handles conflict checks different. Create invoice automatically. If you know your consultation fee and you hear you have um, Lawmatics pay, you can just have that invoice automatically create, send, they pay it. You didn't do a thing. Money is done. Or you can create a folder in the matter. You can do all of this when you simply move it to a consultation step. It's incredible. And you took all of that off your team. All right. I want to talk about billing. Um, we don't have billing in this part. We we actually use to, once. Go ahead. John, I do want to add um, something in there. Um, when you have mouse control. Here, okay. When you're going in there and we're creating a task. So let's say that you have a, um, a task to follow up with someone after a consultation. You can create that task, put that task in there for someone. Create a delay and wait um, three days. And if that task isn't done, then you can send them a reminder to, hey, you need to do this task. And you can build that out. And that reminder doesn't necessarily need to go, um, well, the reminder would go to yourself. But you can also um, set it up to as a check for other things. So, and and a follow-up is a really bad one, but sometimes you send a form to somebody that they need to fill out. For example, and here's where we use this. We send a form to the attorney that they need to fill in this information and tell us this stuff. If the attorney hasn't filled out that form and hasn't gotten it done because they get busy and now it's three days later and I don't have it yet, I get a notification that, hey, you don't have it yet. They get an email that says, you need a reminder. Hey, you need to go do this. And um, I get a reminder that says they haven't done this yet. Follow up with them. So now I get to walk over to their office and say, hey, I'm still waiting on this. And it didn't fall through the crack because it didn't. It's not just that they didn't get it done, but you can use these that way to be very powerful to make sure things don't disappear. And that's important. I just wanted to throw that in there. When we're talking about all this stuff. I love that. And this conversation we're having today seems a little different because Beth and I are just going to geek out on technology because again, <laughs> we want you to know what exists so you can ask the right questions of what you want to do to solve a problem. So that's why we're kind of going crazy yep. side of technology <laughs> for the legal space. Yeah. All right. Um, I am going to talk about billing. I can't do it in here um, because we don't have the billing feature in this Lawmatics we have. We have it in a different one. But it's built into most systems. Um, stop doing it elsewhere. I am not talking accounting. Accounting and billing are absolutely two different things. Accounting is the accounting for your firm. Um, I have yet to see platform that has a stellar accounting setup but billing all of them are worth using um in some way or another and the reason i say to use the billing in in um any of these platforms is because that's how you get the reports if you have your billing in here your numbers are going in your profits your losses all of that your expenses that's going into the report so you can see how much a referral has generated you, how much a matter is costing you. Again, this isn't for your CPA. This is for you in reporting. Use the built-in billing system. Lawmatics is great. Um, it lets you do, of course, all your time billing, fixed fee billing, like most systems. But this has great reminders of make sure to pay this, um, and all of that, it has some dashboards that the client can see past bills, current bills, upcoming bills, uh, but use the billing system. Don't try and reinvent the wheel and go get quick in because you don't want to mix it in with your QuickBooks because that's supposed to be more accurate. So you get another, stop doing that. Absolutely use your in your built-in billing system in some manner, and we can help you with that. Um, and again, the most important part of that is so you can report on it. Uh, follow-ups. Stop typing things into Excel. 
Excel is great. I use it as a calculator. I could just open the calculator, but I open Excel and use it as a calculator. That's great. You can do all that, but you shouldn't be tracking things in Excel if you have a proper database, such as Lawmatics or maybe you have Clio or Action Step. Um, but the only thing you should be doing in Excel is extracted data um, and then manipulating it over there. But you shouldn't be writing your follow-ups in Excel, your consultation numbers. Keep that in your database and we can help you extract that into a proper report or how you want to see it. But when you start going all over the place, then you're going to start finding that some things are over here in Excel, some things are over here in the database, some are here, some are here, some are here. You've got to use a consolidated solution or you're going to miss things. Um, so Lawmatics is great at exporting data, how you want to see it. Um, and I'll even show you here, they have quick overviews, which is excellent for just quick glances. You can see your daily new matters, your daily new clients, monthly new matters, monthly new clients. This is because you're putting different prices in. What's your pipeline value? What's your conversion rate? Cost per client. Obviously, these are fake numbers. If you're cost per client is $855, please call me and I'll also connect you with some other tools to get that cost down. <laughs> Overall cost per matter and your total spend. You can see source stats of where they came from. Um, you can see your marketing channels of how your ROI is, pipeline stages and values. And then it has some more detailed reporting. Whoops. Uh, analytics. <laughs> you can look at it today, this week, this month, this year, or custom. Here's your leads at a glance. You can set lead goals. So I can click on this and I can say in every day, I want to get three new potential, three new leads calling. This week, I want to get 10. This month, I want to get um, 40. And this year, I want to get 480. Because you put goals right here, as you use this database, it's populating how you're doing on reaching your goals for how many new leads you need and are getting. And then your new clients works the same. You can type in your goal here every day. I'm going to say zero every day. That's a lot. Maybe you want one new client a day, um, but maybe you want three a week. And um, what's that for 15 a month? So it'll give you a little extra and maybe 250 a year. There you go. Now you can track that because you put your goals in your source stats. Um, where did this, where did this stuff come from? Um, if it's hired potential or lost, you can see it right here. You can see your conversion rates um matters over time volume over time it'll just show you over time of how you're doing you'll see some trend charts you can say i want to see 300 or 90 days and you can start seeing some trends you can see your appointments and then you can start seeing your marketing information that'll just start populating when you're doing your marketing how is that doing so um this is stop top typing it into Excel. Use the data in your database to use summary charts like this. Or again, we we have the um, prospective client management workflows and reports through Power BI um, that can extract all of this and make it even more detailed because this is obviously a quick summary. But you should be able to do something like this in your database for quick review. Okay, so that is um, stop using Excel, use it for extracted data, and then to manipulate that data. Time entries, use quick code features. Um, I don't know that we have that set up in here. Whoops, that's an expense. So time entry. Um, Let's say this is gonna be Minnie and Mickey Mouse. It's Beth's time entry. What's the activity type? Um, I haven't put any in. I'm gonna call this consultation. 
Well, that's a bad example. I'm going to call this email. Default rate, let's say it's $350 an hour. And then pick your favorite color. <laughs> All right, so now we know we're going to tag this as email. But then quick codes, we don't have it set up. It would auto-populate here and say, um, read and responded to email from client. And that can auto-populate. And then obviously your duration of you know, 0.5 hours at this rate or change it, start time, and then you just save it. So use quick code features that'll auto-populate time entries to standardize how they're being populated because that's what goes on an invoice. Um, we talked about Excel. Um, I did forget to say the biggest reason not to make Excel spreadsheets, unless you're extracting data, you're making it harder on yourself because you're looking at the database, you're typing data over here so you can see how many consultations are coming up next week. You're over here. You miss one. You do it here. You go to the team meeting and you say, we have four. And they said, well, we have seven. You can't say there's something wrong in the database because it wasn't brought from the database. It's either human error or it's the database. Now you have two things to troubleshoot instead of just extracting it through. And then you can quickly see, oh, shoot, we missed these two because they weren't put on the right step or stage or whatever. You're really making it harder on yourself. So use the tools built in. Uh, drafting, I'm gonna let Beth talk about. Okay, so um, all of the, the drafting that you can do, um, and I did talk about this a little bit when we talked about documents, um, being able to pull that data out, um, a big, thing with the, the drafting part is also being able to put all of the people in. So when you have, um, when you're drafting all of your uh, estate planning documents or any of your other documents, you're adding those people in there. And when you're adding them in there, you are um, um, also getting their information into your database. Now, what does that matter? Well, it matters um in some cases, it matters because you are, uh, they're now available for conflict checks. Um, that is a big part of it, um, that you are getting all of that captured correctly for that. And also that it makes your, um, your data feeding into your uh, drafting a whole lot easier. The other part of that is um, when we're talking about drafting, we're talking about following up our um and extracting that data out of your database. Um, one way, a huge way to do that is a drafting uh, report. Um, so that all of that thing that you're drafting, where it is. Um, so if you have a meeting next week, you can look at this report and say, here's all the meetings I have next week. And here's the status of the drafting. Oh, this one's not complete and ready to go. What needs to be done with that? Um, so the drafting report is huge. And um, with all of these, they can be emailed to you. So, you know, you build a drafting report in there and you see where the drafting is and um, have that emailed to your, your office manager, your attorney, whatever. They know then what they're, what's coming up and that it's there and that's peace of mind. It's less stuff running through your head when you know it's all captured somewhere. And then you don't have to worry if you have it. Uh, there's people do it on spreadsheets. You have it on a spreadsheet. Somebody comes by and say, hey, those ones are done. And then the phone rings and then you forgot to f update it. And then it's, it's just a snowball from there. So this really, the drafting report does really help with that, um, getting all of that stuff in there. The last one I want to show is uh, mass email marketing. It's a really big thing in law firms, and it should be. It's definitely moving to text messaging, but the email is still there. So there's a lot of third-party platforms. Um, I think the two most popular are ActiveCampaign and MailChimp. 
a lot of those platform, a lot of the different practice management softwares semi connect or they say they do and it kind of works, kind of doesn't. The beauty of Lawmatics, so you know what exists to ask the right questions, is it's built in. So the first thing is you can build your audience. You may know it as a list in Active Campaign or a list in MailChimp. These are all the different things. So let's say you want to make a list of all of your um, non-engaged potential clients. This is a list that you want to be able to email at any time. Um, we're going to make this for matters. And here we want to just show if the status is equal to potential new client. There is my list and I hit save. And you can make that as complicated as you want for drills, drill downs. But I wanted to create that so you could see how that works. I can see there's 15. Now this is live. If you put a new client or new potential client in here um, this afternoon and you look at it, this will go to 16 or 14 as you get hired or lost. These just fluctuate themselves. You're not doing it manually like you would MailChimp or those because this is reading your database and what you're doing. So you're always sending it to the correct people. And then this lets you build the emails right in here. So let's say we want to create um, an email template. And you can do plain text emails, but I'm going to show you this one because this is what everybody wants to do when they're marketing. And we will call this estate plan um, bonanza. You're having some big thing. So you do bonanza. Perfect. The template you want to use, you can pick one. So you can say, I want to do a standard. It has a lot of these built in and then you can customize it. It's just like the marketing platforms you're used to. And then it's as simple as going into the builder, just like the other platforms, but it's built in and reading what you're doing in the database every day. You can put your logo up here, change the picture, remove this, just like the other platforms. Um, it has the unsubscribe, just like the other platforms. So um, they just built it in and it's a huge, huge benefit to do it this way. So let's say I'm just gonna hit save. Um, I'm gonna save this as an email. I'm gonna call this law firm and the bonanza is on. Make your that, recipient type, save. And then the magic of just go to your campaigns and create a campaign. This is the bonanza we're doing. What is this? This is our big estate planning push. Clients can't see this, so you, that's just for you. Choose your audience that you just created that is always up to date. Non-engaged potential clients. Who? Um, what's the email? What did I call that, Beth? Um, Bonanza. Yeah. There it is. So that's the email I created. Who do you want to send it from? The firm email. You can add attachments. You can add your default signature or not. You can run it once. You can make it repeat. Or you can put it on a date base. So let's say we have something coming up in March. I'm going to prepare this now and tell it when to send. Just like you would in MailChimp Active Campaign. It's all in here. When do you want to run it? At a specific date or on manual activation? Maybe I want to just send it right now. So I'm going to say on manual, I say create, activate campaign. There it is. If I want to put attachments and then I hit send. I'm not going to hit send because I don't know who all we have emails <laughs> in here. This is our play system, but um, that's your email marketing. And then is what it does is it's going to show you just like the other platforms, how many were sent, what's your percent open rate. Total sends, unique opens, bounces. It shows you your click rate, all of it. You can see everything. It's going to email you a report. It's exactly what you're used to, but it's built in.
So this is a huge advantage of Lawmatics. And now you know it does exist to have it inside a platform. All right. I think we're going to buzz on to the freebie. Are you good with that, Beth? Yeah. All right. So the freebie is fun. Some of you probably do this. And some of you may not have done this yet. I'm going to show you how to use a, fe use a feature of AI. Mind you, this is the absolute simplest thing that AI does. I mean, AI can turn you into a giraffe if you want with your face. I mean, it's <laughs> crazy what AI can do. And beyond that, it can drive cars. But this one is just the bare bones basic, but it's really helpful. So I'm going to show you how to type a letter or email with AI. So the first part is I'm just going to show you there are lots of free websites of free chat GPT, which is AI. Um, and you can just type what you want here. So let's, I'm not going to do it here because it's going to do the same thing. But this is just chat AI gpt.org there is a limited number of words a month you can use without paying for it but this is my favorite because it's really easy to use i'm going to do this because it's actually built into lawmatics we're seeing some of the practice management software start to put ai into their platforms but it's really slow to creep in but action or um lawmatics has done it so i'm going to go into a matter and I'm going to say email. I'm going to just choose an email. Whoops, I'm going to actually type an email. What do I want to call it? Um, AI test for right now. You can tag it, recipient, contact, promotional, whatever you want. Put your subject line. Skip all this. This is where it is. Help me write. And I'm sure you've seen it, but I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that make this really cool. So I want to write an email. I'm really frustrated with a client and I am having trouble write and writing a nice email, but I know they would be a great client and we know that it would really benefit them. They're just struggling to control their emotions because their dad just died, but it's really hard to write a good email because they just scream at us the whole time. So we're going to let AI do it. Um, so you say, who is this email for? Um, I'm going to say client, and you'll see why. What would you like this email to cover? So here's the basic tips to doing it. And obviously, I'm at the bare bones. Tell it your topic, your tone, your end goal or the call to action, and the length. So the topic, um, write a follow-up email that asks to schedule, whoops, an estate planning consultation because they said they wanted to protect their home from Medicaid. Okay, now we want to, that's the topic. Now we want to put the tone. The more specific you are, the better results you're going to get. Um, I'm going to say make this friendly, professional, and compassionate, whatever you want. What is the call to action? Make a call to action to schedule a consultation with us. And then how long do you want it to be? Make the email, uh, I'm just gonna say two paragraphs. And then we hit generate. Mind you, this is inside Lawmatics. So dear client, this is where you would put their name and it'll just generate it. I hope this email finds you well. I wanted to follow up on our previous conversation regarding your interest in protecting your home from Medicaid. I understand how important it is to safeguard your assets and ensure that your loved ones are taken care of. I didn't say any of that. Our law firm specializes in estate planning and we would be honored to assist you. Given the complexity of estate planning, I highly recommend scheduling a consultation with our experienced attorneys. During the consultation, we can discuss your specific circumstances in detail and devise a comprehensive plan tailored to your needs. Our compassionate team will guide you through the process and address any concerns or questions you may have. 
please let us know a convenient time for you to meet with us. You can reach us at, and it put the phone number that's in your system or reply to this email. We look forward to helping you to protect your home and secure your future. It reiterated what I told the goal was. AI just did that. It is friendly, it is professional, and it is compassionate. So use AI. Um, this one is great if you don't have Lawmatics, but if you do, it does the same thing, but it's built in. Um, obviously, I'm gonna tell you to go edit it. AI does make mistakes and there's some weird things that happen sometimes. I do also want to address privacy concerns that people have with AI. Don't put personal information into AI. Don't type client addresses, social security numbers, your information, because this is reading from all over, all sorts of different sources. And it's reading by what people are entering um, and scouring. So again, just don't put personal stuff in there. Put what you want, and then you can come in here and say, dear Margaret, and make a couple little changes. That's how I like to handle it, just to avoid any question of privacy um, concerns. So that's just my warning. And it's not even a warning. It's just how to address that privacy concern. Um, drafting in this, there are some drafting platforms out there that do AI. They have a lot more safeguards um, in place for this type of situation, but I can't speak to them because I don't use them. But there are some out there that do that. But just be leery of putting personal information into any AI type tool. So that's your freebie for today is using AI. And you can do that exact same thing right over here. Whoops. There are ads. Let's say I want to type an email to Beth or write an email to Beth that there is a mouse in her house that needs to leave, make it urgent, call to action is call <laughs> someone to get it out. And then you go like this and it's gonna write something. Hmm. It says it's thinking. There it is. I hope this email finds you well. Your immediate attention, a pressing issue that requires <laughs> urgent action. There is a mouse infestation in your house that needs, and I could have told it. And it's to... going through and telling me there's health risk and all that other stuff. <laughs> so use these tools. They are for your benefit. Just use them with caution of personal information. Okay, that's all we have. Um, let's do a minute of Q&A or so if um, you have any questions. I think Nancy's the only one in here. And if not, we can just wrap it up. No, I have no questions for now. Um, it's my first time on here. So awesome. uh, there's a lot for me to learn from Lawmatics. Are you using, are you using that? Yes, yes, we do use uh, Lawmatics. Uh, I've done the task. Um, I didn't know anything about the template. So that's definitely something I will speak to my attorney about. Absolutely. And we can help you with all of that as well. I put some links in the in the chat. I also put our free prospective um, client goal calculator that helps you set goals. I put that link in our chat too, that you get that for free. It's a great tool. Awesome. I'm also going to look into that AI. I think that's pretty cool. They're awesome. I, I I love it. Sometimes I'll write an email and I'm like, eh, I'm going to run it through AI and it comes out better than what I could have done. <laughs> awesome. Well, I really appreciate this. I'll be joining more of these. Um, there's a lot for me to learn from this. Perfect. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap this up real quick with our closing statement. So if you do want to see what else exists to make your life easier in your role at the firm, always the free discovery meeting is available. Set yourself up for real wins in the new year. Um, links in the description and chat of this Zoom. And if you haven't got our version two of the free perspective goal client calculator, the link is in the description and the chat of this Zoom. So um, I appreciate you spending time with us. If you are watching it on YouTube, 
Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell to make sure you catch all of our legal technology talk. And everybody have an awesome day. Take Thank care. Thank you, y'all. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.